Hi everybody, how y'all doing? This is Carla and I'm here with a, a weekly message, another weekly message and I hope this can carry you th through and give you something to think about and hopefully encourage you in many ways. Have you ever been hurt by the actions of those in the church? And I mean, this can be from the pastor on down. And it, it's an array of things that can hurt us. It's not always physical. Um, however, that does happen. And it's a shame that it happens from those who profess to be believers, who profess to be Christians, who profess to be children of God to do any kind of harm to anybody is just wrong but church hurt is very common I, I remember um, I can go way back to when I was a child I didn't know it was church hurt I just uh, moved on I remember let me, let me just give you an example because some of you may be experiencing it and and also do not realize that that's church hurt. I remember, okay, as a teen, and as I was blooming and blossoming and going through puberty and all of that, I was growing up and I was growing and I was getting heavier. Okay, I was I was a chubby cheer um cheerleader, <laughs> never a cheerleader. I was a chubby teenager. Okay, I was a uh um. Uh, I was heavy okay now I remember just you know thinking back and I just thought about this today I remember there were two different uh, members that would say very unkind things to me I remember one and 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 this one was a man that made it worse. I mean, he could have been my, almost my grandfather. And I remember he said, and, and he he kind of chuckled. But it wasn't funny to me. And he said it in front of my mom. Everybody knew my mom, loved my mom. You know, our family, we were, we were a big family in that church. Okay. He said, don't you think it's time that you start pushing away from the table? Now, I I was very innocent and naive, and I didn't understand what he meant. But my mama got on him, you know, at that time. She, she told him off. And I asked later, what did he mean? What did that mean, push away? Well, he was, he was saying, stop eating, eating, you know. He was not just implying. He was saying, in other words, you're too heavy. But... How many of us know that wasn't for him to, t to say? That wasn't for him to tell me. I knew him. We knew him. But he didn't know me like that. You know. <laughs> Sweet man. And um, I had respect, respect for him. But to say that, you know, you, you, you don't become that familiar with somebody. That was... That was painful, and I realized what he said. I, it made me feel even worse than I was feeling because I had very low self-esteem, and that was one of the issues. And for this grown man, who I admired and respect and looked up to, would say something like that to me. That was hurtful. So I, you know, I tiptoed around him. I, um... I, I didn't take too kind to him, but I was hurt. And then there was another member. And she would say some things to him as well to me. We have to be careful how we address people. Everything is not cute. And just because you're older, it does not give you the right to say anything you want to say. That's not right. Bottom line. And we have to be careful, again, how we speak to people. People have left 
the church uh, for less than that. But that was painful. Look how that, that affected me personally through the years. Okay? But I went on and I flourished in life. You know, it could have had a much worse impact. Um, but to say that was, was awful. And I've heard, I've heard not just that church, but in churches and, and other churches, um, especially, uh, after Katrina, Hurricane Katrina, I, uh, to be honest, I remember people, uh, telling other people, Things, but but being very cold about it just because especially when it's a smaller church and everybody knows everybody all of the families know each other you don't talk to a person any kind of way just tell them anything that's not nice that's pushing people away from the church and we wonder why our children decide I'm not going back to church Boy, you better go to church. Well, they don't feel welcome in the church. That's church hurt. Some of us don't treat visitors kind. Some of us don't take them under our wings and, and show some compassion and, and try to be helpful. Some people look at people. Mm, look what she got on. Look how she dressed. I don't know who she thinks she is. You know, those kind of things are hurtful. That's not how you help somebody. That's not how Christ would want us to be with one another. In fact, the word tells us to be kind with one another, especially those of the household of faith. That means the church. Treat everybody kind, yes, but especially those of the household of faith. It's, it's like your own family. Treat everybody nice. Yes. But be extra kind to your family. You don't talk to your family. Any kind of way. And just tell them any kind of way. And just be mean. And just like I can say what I want to say. I'm old. I'm older. That don't give you the right. In fact. If you're older. You ought to know better. Be kind and loving to one another. And I want to uh, give some encouragement those who have felt church hurt now I don't that's just some examples that I know of but um, I, I, I mean I even remember uh, somebody told me who was very dear to me and they were telling me this for a reason they shared with me a reason that uh, you know uh, unwanted sexual advances was made towards her and the thing about it, I knew this person, and not the person who did it, but the person who who received the, the, the unfair treatment. And I'm just like, why would somebody do that to her? How can they do that? And so that turned her, kind of turned her away from, from the church. Now, we're supposed to be bringing people in and evangelizing and teaching and encouraging and, and uplifting and molding and shaping lives. But we're pushing people away when we treat them unkind. When we talk to them in any way. There's nothing wrong with being uh, real. You know, especially for women. Well, the men too, but as a woman, I, I'm familiar with, with Titus in the Bible. Tells the women of the church especially the older women. He tells them to teach the younger ladies. Teach them how to be good wives, how to be good women, how to be good people. Teach them. We don't teach them by shaming them, talking about them, uh, disrespecting them, pushing them away, making them feel uncomfortable. You know, I, I understand there are... there. I know that there's people who come into church who, who are not dressed properly. I'm going to say properly. I'm not going to say well. Because nobody should be kept away from the church because they're not dressed a certain way. The first thing you want to do is to 
Show them Christ. Let, let his light shine through you. That's what you want to show them. Now, of course, there are some ways that we are disrespectful and inappropriate in our attire. It's not a matter of, of uh, I don't like that style. But there are some things that, yes, we do need to be more appropriate. Okay, but don't make them feel bad. Don't push them away. Teach. Teach and show. How are you going to tell somebody something and you acting like a Rambo? Or you acting like, you know, <laughs> you're, not a, you're not a role model. You're not an example. And I'm sure they're sitting there saying, if that's what it means to be a Christian, I don't want to be one. I don't want to be here. Make people feel comfortable. Treat people well, even if they're, you know, even if they're in a sin that you know that they shouldn't be in, uh, that's not for you to 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 uh, to judge them on. And what I mean by that, don't hold that against them. I'm not sh I'm not saying to lower the standards of the word. I'm not saying that, but we have to teach, and we have to be. Uh, uh, approachable. I remember a dear pastor. Uh, uh, he he was actually also a professor at the seminary I was going to, and a long time pastor. And he was saying that especially since uh, the laws have changed and and now uh, gay marriages. Okay, I'm gonna use that. Gay marriages are are lawful. And there was a time that they were saying that. Uh, a minister must marry somebody even if they're of the uh, same sex. Now, I know my husband is a, is a minister, and, and I'm going to tell you, no, he's not going to do it. And he doesn't have to, nor does the pastor. However, however, what that pastor was saying to us, um, the class, was that he, you know, he's still stand on the word. He still believed the word. And he still preached that word. But there is an approach that you can take. Instead of pushing people away, you should be approachable. He said that somebody eventually did come to him and say that they wanted to talk with him. And they wanted to be ministered. And they wanted to learn it. You know, they wanted to, they, they, they needed, they needed counseling. They needed, uh, they needed uh, Christian counseling. But they didn't feel comfortable in coming to him because he was beating them, beating them over the head with the Bible. Okay, there's a way to teach the word without beating people up. How, what if somebody does want to discuss it, want, want to understand or need help, but they don't come to you because they know all you're going to do is, 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 is just shun them. Put them down. God loves all of us. Okay. He does love all of us. We are to love one another. Don't make somebody feel insignificant. Because of their lifestyle. Or whoever they are. And that could be for anything. It's not just about gay. It's not just about homosexuality. Because truth be told. We all have something. We all fall short. We all have said, in fact, my scripture, my passage for the week is in 1 John. Where 1 John says that if we say that we have not sinned and we do not sin, we are lying and the truth is not in us. And furthermore, when we do that, we're making God a liar. So, although, yes, I... You know, and, and, and I, I stand on the word as well. But I will never not love a person or push a person away or make a person feel like dirt because they, they do something that I believe and I trust that they shouldn't be doing. Okay? People have to make their own choices. Now, you can teach and you can show. You can demonstrate. You can lead and you can guide. Don't beat people over the head and don't 
hurt people on purpose. I know the truth hurts, but your job is to just tell the truth. It's going to do what it's going to do. God's word don't need defending from us. We can share the word. Teach the word. But we should not hurt people on purpose and unnecessarily. Because how will they hear? How will they receive? How will they learn if you're pushing them away? Don't tear people down, an individual down. That brother didn't have to tell me, don't you think it's time for you to start pushing away? That wasn't helpful. We weren't having that kind of discussion. That was inappropriate for him to say that to me. That was. Now, I, I could almost see if this was my, my, my little sister and, I, and I'm teaching her and I'm talking to her about healthy choices. That's different. We have that rapport. But no. Just because he was old didn't give didn't make it right. And ladies, you know some of y'all be in the church saying, What you got that why you have that on? That's just too ugly. That's just too short. Teach. But you can do so and do like Christ. Extend grace. Give grace. Okay, and you know they have, there are some people that's gonna they they are gonna come inappropriate. They're gonna come, and then the first thing they said is, "Well, I'm you know come as you are, come as you are." Don't mean come with what you have on. It's not about your clothes. It's not about the outfit, like my pastor said. Not the outfit. It's the infant. It's where you are in life. Come where you are. You don't have to get right to get right. A lot of people have said, "I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come to church when I when I get my life together. When I get right, the way to get right and to get things in order is to come to the church. You don't have to wait until that change happens. That change can happen as you go. As you go, it's a it's a movement. Don't wait for things to get better. Don't wait till you know, you know. Okay, I don't have money to put in church." Don't wait until you feel you're going to have money to come to church. That's not a prerequisite for attending service. That's not a requirement of the church. You know, way back in the day, people used to pay dues. I remember my pastor in Rome, he said, well, this is not a, a social and pleasure club. You don't have to pay dues, but you teach how to tithe and how to give. You give out of the goodness of your heart. There should not be a fee. The church don't charge. You know, it's not about that. So whether you have a penny or a hundred dollars in your pocket, you come to church. Don't let nobody shame you. And if you put nothing in the basket, that's between you and God. Either you don't have it or you just chose not to do it. Again, that's between you and God. But God knows your heart. And God knows what you're giving. It's not up to somebody else. And you know, I, I, I don't know about now. I haven't seen this in a while. But I remember they used to, they used to be like, well, we need a thousand dollars. Everybody that's going to get $20, come on up. Why are you putting people on display like that? That's not what the church is about. The purpose of the offering, really, from the beginning, you want to get biblical, was that they raised money. In order for the, the pastor and the, well, actually the, the apostles to go and bless the widows, the widows, the orphans, the poor, the needy. That's why they raised money. Now, I understand the church needs lights. The church needs the facilities. It needs running water. You need to have a working toilet there. You know, I understand that. I understand that there's expenses. And yes, there's nothing wrong with the congregation giving money towards that and helping with the further the furthering of the gospel. I understand that. But you don't charge people to come to church. You can you can express a need, let them know. 
uh, and give them the opp- let them have the opportunity, let them take the opportunity if they want to give. Nobody should feel ashamed or 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 should feel bad. Nobody should feel uh, that they can't come to church. And I don't know how you all do offerings. Some people, you know, it's just in the envelope and you put it in the basket. And some you walk around, whatever. If you don't have, you don't have. But don't let nobody hurt you or shame you because you don't. That's church hurt people. Come on. Think about it. You are pushing some people away. The church should be. It's not a nightclub. It's not an entertainment thing. It's, it's not a... Uh, it, 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 it's a it's it's a ministry where people are helped, people are taught. It should be a safe haven. No one should have to uh, worry uh, or feel uh, afraid. Uh, foolishness shouldn't be coming from the pulpit. Nobody should be hurt by the deacons, you know, talking to you any kind of way demanding things looking at you crazy <laughs> you know don't let that happen even something simple like this I used to teach Sunday school in fact I was the Sunday school superintendent in New Orleans I was the assistant superintendent I was the vacation Bible school director I was a Sunday school teacher I was the Christian education vice president I did a lot of teaching pastors used to call me at times to teach Bible study uh, if there was conferences, whatever, I did a lot of teaching. But one thing I learned, and I, I thank God for my pastor in New Orleans, my pastor here too. Um, uh, let me finish this. Uh, hello? I'm, what? Your what? Uh huh. Mm. I'm coming, y'all. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Can I? Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. Can I call you back? Because I'm doing a bit live. Okay, all right, bye. I'm sorry, y'all. That was my daughter, and um, when my children call, need to talk, I need to answer. But um, where was I? I was uh, oh yeah. One thing I learned, uh, and this is a, this may seem like a small thing, but it's an important thing, and especially during the time I was coming up, things may be. A different now but my pastor taught us not to put people on the spot you know a lot of times at Sunday school okay they'd be like okay now it's your turn to read your turn to read here read this read that now the thing is there were a lot of adults who could not read well or didn't know how to read and we don't know that and they feel ashamed and oh they're gonna call on me to read See, you don't know what situation a person is in. Even with a child, there's a way to handle that. You teach a child differently than an adult. But with the, the adults, uh, you know, the best thing is to ask for volunteers to read. You don't force somebody to do it because you don't know their level. You just don't know. And that might seem like something crazy or past your head because you could read like 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 crazy. But everybody is not you. And somebody who's always picked on or if they're reading and it and it they're mispronouncing words and you're constantly badgering them and you know, like yeah, I mean we, we could do some some mean things. That's gonna hurt somebody and push them away. They're not gonna come. So we have to uh, become more aware. Aware. We have to uh, think about social issues. We have to think about the mentality of folks. 
We have to think about the personalities of people. We have to be cognizant of all of that and be careful not to hurt. The way you talk to your friends, uh, you can't do that with everybody. All right, and don't go out, out your way to be harsh with people. That's, these are uh, people who, who come who, who have come to the church for safety. They should feel free to worship. Show them how to worship and praise God. Teach them about the goodness of God. Don't show them the um, ignorance. 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 <laughs> Don't show them the ignorance of people. Teach them. Meet their needs first. Jesus was, is always the, the best example. Jesus showed us that when he fed the uh, multitude, when he fed the 5,000 with the fish and the bread, he taught them, but he met their need first. They were hungry. They needed to eat. Let's meet their need first because nobody's going to listen to you if they're not in the mindset or if you are turning them off by your personality and your attitude they're not going to hear what you're teaching and the best teacher is the one who shows the lesson let them see it okay so again if you've been hurt in the church I want to encourage you to not let that stop you. As I read, I read something today that said, you've been hurt in the church. Know that that was people, not God. Flawed people. We're not perfect. I definitely am not condoning the hurt. But I want you to know that that's people. Okay? It's not God. Keep your eyes on God. Some people do stop going to a church or stop going to church because of people. But when you do that, think about this. What you're doing is that your focus is not on God. Now, I understand maybe this particular uh, church is not for you. But don't let that stop you from seeking a place where you can feel comfortable to worship. You know, there's a lot of people, there's people who, let's say, for example, go to mega churches. I have nothing to say against them. But for me, that's not for me. That's not for me. And I know that, but that's not going to stop me from going to church. There have been ministers, popular ministers, famous ministers that have done things that was wrong. And some people sit back and say, see, you See why I don't go to church? You see why I don't I don't give to the church? Look what all he had. Look what he's doing with the money. You do the right thing. Don't let him. Don't let them stop you. Don't withhold your gifts because of what somebody else did. It's just like a relationship. You've been hurt in a relationship. You can't hold that against the next person you meet. Because what that other person did to you. Doesn't mean that the one you with right now. Is going to do the same. Don't let what happened in the past. Determine your present. The same with the church. Don't let it stop you. From worshiping. As you should. Okay. And those of you who, who doing things that's not nice, that's uncanny, that you, you're saying any, anything to people and, you know, you acting like you perfect and you hold it in doubt and you've never made a mistake in your life and you don't know how to love, uh, to you I say stop it. Pray and ask God to give you uh, wisdom, number one, but to allow you to have a compassionate heart. Empathize with people. No, I, I, I never, I, maybe I did not experience what you experienced, but I could put myself under your skin so I could feel your pain. It won't be the same, you know, but I can feel for you. 
I can feel for you. Church hurt is not God hurt. That's the people. Amen. God bless you all. I will see you around. Let me know that you that you watched this. I would appreciate it. And that has been helpful. And please feel free to share because we don't know who's been here, who has been hurt. God bless you all. Bye-bye.